Our next section is about transforming data. So let's say that your statistics class took a test and the distribution of your test scores are listed below. So you can see that some of the scores out of 50 points were not so good. So thankfully your teacher is going to be very nice to you and add five points to each test score. So now we want to know is how does this change your distribution? And this one I actually did it all for you so you can take a look at it. But what you're going to find is that of course the end, the number of scores doesn't change, but what's going to happen then is your new dot plot is going to be the same as the old dot plot except it's shifted over. So the first thing that you'll, you should notice is that your shape stays the same. So that's the first thing to note. However, you will find a few other things that are very important. So your measures of center are actually going to all increase by five. Now you can take a look at that graph down below. If you notice, the median before in the, in the first graph was at 37, so it was somewhere around here. And I'll actually show it on this graph right here. It's around there. But now that spot has moved over a little bit and it is now at 42. So you will find that whenever you have a measure of center and you add a constant to it, it actually changes by that constant. Same thing is going to also happen to your mean, your x bar. That also increases by 5. However, if you look at your graph here, you will notice that the spread doesn't change. It doesn't get more spread out, it doesn't get less sp spread out. It stays exactly the same. So you'll notice that in our list of data, standard deviation doesn't change. IQR also doesn't change. Now, the Q1 and the Q3, those are individual students' test scores. Those ones are going to change. They're going to both be increased by 5. Those two change by 5. However, if you find, you'll find that if you subtract them, you will get the same IQR that you had before. Maximum and minimum, once again, those are still two students' test scores. Those are also going to change by 5. Range, still going to be 36. If you subtract the max minus the min, it is going to change. It is going to stay the same. So the center is increased by 5. The shape stays the same. Also, the spread stays the same. So now that we're going to say that your teacher decided not to be nice and not give you those five points, but he is going to actually double the scores so that it can be converted into a percent. And you can tell that this isn't me because I would force you to calculate what the percent actually was rather than writing it out for you. So what we're going to do now is every single score is going to be doubled. So you'll see that all the individual scores, such as the maximum and the minimum, are also going to double. And believe it or not, I actually found a mistake on here. This should be 30 because the number of scores is still going to be 30. So you'll find that in addition to all the scores doubling, all measures of center, including your mean and your median, are also going to double. So your center scores are going to double. So if you want, you can look at your graph. Originally, we found that the median was around there. If you look for that exact same position in your distribution, you'll find that it's, it's definitely doubled. So the medium increase, median increases from 37 to 74. The mean also does the exact same thing. Now, one interesting thing you'll find is that the second graph your scores are much more spread out. So what happens actually is that your standard deviation and your IQR also are going to increase by two. 
So those also are going to be multiplied by 2. Same thing with your range. So your maximum has been multiplied by 2, your minimum has been multiplied by 2, and actually if you subtract those, you're going to get double the range, which is interesting. Since your Q1 and your Q3 are individual scores, those have also doubled. So now one thing that I do want you to notice is that your shape, while it's been stretched out, it's still a bit skewed to the left. It still has a cluster in um, the, it's a, it's, the, it's a different location, but it still has a cluster that looks the same. So actually your shape does not, sh not change, just your spread changes and the locations all change. So just to summarize, when you add or subtract a constant to a set of data, your center is going to change. Your spread does not change. Stays the same. Same thing with your shape. Your shape also stays the same. And then if you multiply or divide by a constant, your center still changes. It gets multiplied or divided by that constant. Your spread also gets multiplied or, or divided by that constant. However, your shape, while a little bit stretched out, is going to be the same. So I have a fun little problem for you. So we know that in 2010, taxi cabs in New York charge an initial fee of $2.50 plus $2 per mile. You have an equation for that. And this businessman finds that the mean fare that he paid was $15.45. The standard deviation of the fare is $10.20. So we want to find the mean and standard deviation of the lengths of his cab ride in miles. If you feel like you can do it, go for it, pause this video, and try this problem. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and go through it. So, I want you to look up above at our, meet, at our rules, and we have a rule that when you're adding or subtracting by a constant, and when you're multiplying or dividing by a constant, the mean is going to change. So, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to use this equation... And I can actually solve this to find my mean number of miles. So when you solve this out, you're going to use what you learned back in algebra. You subtract the 250 from both sides and you divide both sides by 2. You'll find out that the number of miles is going to be equal to 6.475. And that's our mean. So now, our standard deviation is a little bit trickier. The reason it's trickier is because we have something up above that says that when you add or subtract a constant, the spread stays the same. And standard deviation is definitely a form of spread. So it's going to stay the same when you add or subtract something. However, it's going to change when you divide it. So actually, you can... Try to use this equation that you started off with, but try to remember the rules. So our rule is that we're going to start out, in normal algebra, you would start out by subtracting 250. However, if you were to subtract 250 from both sides, that would be um, subtracting a constant from your standard deviation, so nothing happens there. But if you multiply or divide, something is going to happen, your standard deviation is going to change. So what I can do is I can divide both sides by 2. When I do that, I end up getting 5.1, so that's actually going to be the standard deviation of my number of miles.